Good afternoon, folks. Uh, thanks so much for having me today. What a, what a great pleasure, what an honor. Uh, my name's Otto Bell. I'm a British filmmaker and creative director, um, but I live in New York uh, for about 11 years. I'm an immigrant. Um, <laughs> and I made a film about a Muslim girl, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to stay, who knows. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's really a great pleasure to be here today. I, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about the intersection between curiosity and cinema, specifically how um, the biggest sort of act of following my curiosity led me to make my first feature film, uh, The Eagle Huntress. But for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, I thought, well, if there are any of you who haven't seen it, um, <laughs> I thought it might be useful just to start with a, a little primer. Here's, here's, here's a trailer. Oh, no, Garrett, could you bring up the trailer, please, mate? Here we go. Thank you. So um, this film uh, uh, premiered at uh, Sundance at the film festival in, in 2016. And it was released in cinemas on November the 2nd uh, of 2016 here in the US. And it, it's really, it's, it's had an incredible life that's, that's really surprised me, genuinely um, uh, surprised me. Uh, it was executive produced by this, this curious character, Morgan Spurlock. Um, it was narrated by Daisy Ridley from Star Wars, Sia, the, the enigmatic um, Australian singer, wrote an original song for us, a beautiful song called um, Angel by the Wings. It was shortlisted for an Oscar, 
Uh, it was nominated for a BAFTA. Um, by and large, the critics really liked it. We had, I think, uh, 96 reviews, and 89 of them were really, really lovely. And, and as the gentleman said, we, we became the, uh, the highest grossing um, uh, documentary of the year. Um, and, <laughs> well, it's not everything. <laughs> the, the, the money really isn't everything. It's more a factor that what that meant was that we had hundreds and thousands of children principally children, girls and boys, turning out to hear this remarkable true story about a young girl who was determined uh, and who worked hard and achieved what it was that she dreamed on. These are actually um, from my, sort of my personal scrapbook. Uh, you can see that um, this little family from the Mongolian steppes, we got to go all over the world together and meet young kids who had their own dreams and who were, who were um, uh, looking for inspiration from girl guides, girl scouts, I should say, um, all, you know, all, the way, all the way through. Marvelous. Some of the school screenings that we did were just really, really sort of life-affirming um, for me, and, 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 and I think so the, the same is true for the family. But it didn't begin that way. Um, I made this film for a just under $100,000, I used my entire life savings, and uh, I got a high interest loan from the bank as well. <laughs> not, not Use somebody else's money, that's the first rule of filmmaking. Doesn't matter how curious you are, make sure you're using somebody else's money. <laughs> um, but uh, I was curious, and, 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 um, and, and it, what, what sparked it for me was this, this photo essay that I saw on the BBC. I was, I was literally, I was sitting in my cube at work, and I, and I stumbled across this story and was incredibly struck by it. And I, um, I was curious about it. So I contacted the photographer, this big scary bloke from Israel called Asher Svedinsky. He had been photographing uh, in the army and he'd finished his national service and he'd gone walkabout and he's a curious chap as well. He, he started photographing the next generation of eagle hunters. There's only thought to be about 250 of them left in the world. And their way of life is, is threatened for a number of reasons, most, most pointedly uh, climate change. And uh, it was him who found Ashul Pan uh, training with her father's eagle. And uh, he just took this remarkable series of photographs, the ones that I would eventually see on the BBC. Um, here she is, you can see this almost preternatural connection she has with, this is a father's bird that she's training with here. Uh, he followed her all the way to school. But it was this photograph that really grabbed me by the lapels and, 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 and you know, sparked my curiosity such that I, I would go on and make my first feature film. And, um, you know, for me, this, this, film, this photograph, not only is it a beautiful photograph, I think it's almost like a painting in a lot of ways, but if you, if you start to dissect it objectively, I think you'll see that it has a lot of the key ingredients that really make for a, for a great film. In the background there, you have the, the Altai Mountains, those, those blues and oranges and purples, a fantastic setting. It's the most remote part of the least populated country in the world. So, it, you know, it's not the end of the world, but you can see the end of the world from there. <laughs> And then here you have these, these golden eagles. This is the largest species of golden eagle in the world of like a seven or eight foot wingspan. I mean, they're, they're, they're like dinosaurs. Um, and then, of course, in the foreground, you have this remarkable young woman who is both beautiful, I think, and angelic, but also very strong. And um, for me, that photograph held a lot of the ingredients that go towards making a great film. So I called up Asher, I found him on Facebook, stalked him, uh, had a Skype with him, and uh, we got on a plane, and we went to Mongolia. These are the little cigar tubes that fly you up to her region twice a week. I once took so much film equipment that, we were wor that the plane physically couldn't take off from, from Ulaanbaatar, the capital, to, to her region in the Altai Mountains. Um, and I was nervous, you know, I, was, I thought, has my curiosity led me to, to a dead end? Um, you know, uh, I was worried about finding the family and pitching them on the idea of making a film. But luckily, they were used to people being curious about the, the way they live their lives, uh, about taking an interest in, 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 how they, in how they do things. So um, 
you know, I remember sitting in their yurt, they sort of, it's the, they call it a gur, having tea the first day I met them. And I said, you know, would you maybe be interested in making a film? And that's when Ashul Pan's father stood up and he said, oh, well, we're going to go and steal a, an eagle off the side of a mountain this afternoon for Ashul Pan. He said, do you think you'd like to film that? <laughs> and I said, absolutely, I would. So that was our first afternoon of filming. And um, it became the first act of, of the documentary. And, um, you know, look, some of, the, some of the critics have said, oh, this is all too good to be true. But, folks, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we did this sequence. This was performed in one single take um, on the first afternoon of filming. Uh, Twelve minutes. We had the mother eagle circling above, threatening to savage Ashul Pan in the, in the, uh, the nest. So we weren't going to do it for a second time. So I had a cameraman here on the ground filming this, this plate. He was actually, he was afraid to climb, he was scared of heights, so he wouldn't go up the cliff. So I said, all right, you stay at the bottom and you get a nice big wide shot. And then Asher and I actually hid behind this outcrop here to get a lateral shot of, of Ashul Pan. Her father, I don't know if you can make it out there, is, he's literally just winching her down on a, on, a, on a rope. A rope is a big word for it, more a piece of string. Um, and we also put a, a GoPro underneath her, underneath her cardigan um, so that it would sort of take you inside the nest. And, you know, we did a lot of sort of inventive things like that. It was, it was fairly ragtag. Um, this was our production. This was our fancy wagon. <laughs> it was, uh, um, you know, no electricity, um, no running water. We sort of lived with the family like ducks in a row at night and um, ran all of our batteries off an electric generator, petrol generator. We did all the sound ourselves on one of these little handheld Zoom recorders. Um, my cameraman, Chris, on the first visit. We then went back multiple times, you know, doubling down on that curiosity each and every time um, as things happened in Ashul Pan's life and the story kind of unfolded for us. Uh, this is the annual Eagle Festival. Um, my camera assistant, Ben, on top of the mountain where they released the birds. Um, we, we wanted to do justice to this incredible landscape. But like I said, I'd, we didn't have much money. We had a crew of about three people, sweaty English blokes. So, um, but we, we, we did want to give it a really big, cinematic, beautiful, polished look and feel. So we threw the kitchen sink at it. And I, I don't think this film would have been possible to make five years ago. You know, we did it with three people. You'd probably need 30 people back in the day. But we, we leaned a lot on drones. Um, here we had our sturdy Soviet era Russian vans <laughs> where we roped open the side door and then we had a steady cam inside and that allowed us to get all of our tracking shots as the family would gallop through the snow. I mean, it, talk about a shoestring budget. Um, my cameraman is amazing. My main cameraman, Simon Niblett, he built me this, this crane. Uh, it's nine meters long. He based it on a ship mast, and it folds away into a snowboard bag. It weighs 25 kilos. So that allows you to get these big, swooping, kind of cinematic shots with just a couple of people. Um, oh, yeah, I, I built a rig to get a GoPro on the back of an eagle <laughs> as well so we could get a proper uh, bird's eye view. They loved that. It didn't phase them at all. Um, but I just wanted to share with you just a, a couple of minutes, just a, a clip next, um, which will show you a little bit of what all of these techniques kind of added up to um, and where all of this curiosity kind of led. This, for those of you who are curious about how these nomadic folks live their lives, this is sort of my little love letter in the middle of the film to, to how these people move from season to season, from grassland to, to their winter homes. Um, apologies in advance, we had a little bit of a technical issue with the audio, so you're not actually going to be able to hear her, father, um, her father's voice speaking over the top of it. But you'll see the subtitles, and, and that'll explain the gist of what he's actually saying. So take a look at this, uh, this clip from the, from the middle of the Eagle Hunters.
the idea. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, to bring it back to, to the beginning, um, Asha Pan was 13 when we filmed. Uh, she's now 15, she'll be 16 on May the 3rd. Uh, to, for those of you wondering where, where, where are they now, uh, Ashul Pan, off the back of the film, got a free scholarship to a really great school. Uh, one of the top three schools in Mongolia actually happens to be in her neighborhood. And she's doing really well there. She's, she's learned Turkish, she's learning English. Her English has really improved. She can now write to me and stuff, which is, is lovely. Um, and, um, you know, she, uh, when, when the film actually took off at Sundance and started to, to you know, we, we started to get a sense that it was going to be a big deal, um, I made the family profit participants in the film. And we set up a, a fund for Ashul Pan's education. She, she wants to be a doctor. So I'm pleased to say that she, um, that that fund is now at, at a point where she'll be able to study medicine wherever she wants to in the world. Um, which brings me to a pitch for you guys that maybe she could be uh, a demon deacon. I don't know. Let's push your people. <laughs> but uh, you could do a lot worse. Trust me. She's an incredible young woman. Thank you all for, uh, for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. Thank you.